Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Lednap Gaming. Today we're going to look at Lifetime Insurance or LTI and ask the ever important question, do you really need it? Before we get started though, if you've ever questioned your landing choices as you wait to exit Hurston's atmosphere, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Okay, so there's two ways to look at LTI, the insurance model and the commodity model. Depending on which model you subscribe to, the course of action is going to be different, so let's first evaluate the insurance model. This model deals with the zero problem, a scenario in which you go from having money to operate ships and play the game to a point at which you have zero UEC. LTI acts as a solution here because it ensures that ships remain in your hangar regardless of your financial situation, from which you could always make your money back. In this model, you could get LTI on all your ships, and large expense aside, this would prevent you from buying ships with in-game currency eventually, and require you to pay more to purchase some ships that have already passed their concept phase, or buy in expensive concierge packages. Under this model, the best use of LTI is one or two ships such as a Cutlass Black or other starting ship. In this instance, as long as you have one of, or two ships that will always be available to you should you reach the zero problem, you could rebuild your empire. Now, I do say smaller starting ships in this case because if we take the 890 jump for example, it's a very expensive ship to operate and if you had no money, you would essentially not be able to operate it. Taking this approach means you will only invest into concepts you actually want, or even wait until they come out in game prior to purchasing them. This is important to consider as well, as currently we're probably still a year or two out from the insurance timer counting down on any ship, and aside from server resets, once you make enough money in game, the zero problem really only exists as a statistical possibility. In fact, in the comments section below, if you've ever had over a million UEC and lost it all in a series of events and had to start over, go ahead and let me know down in the comments section. Now let's talk about the commodity model. In this model, LTI isn't a consideration in the traditional way we think about insurance. Rather, this looks at LTI as securing the real-world value of your money in the game. Understanding this concept is pretty simple, as it simply states that anything you spend real money on should persist regardless. Thus, you're insuring the ship not in case of the zero problem, but rather to guarantee that you get full value for your money. At the onset, this would imply that any ship you spend money on should have LTI, but that doesn't really consider the ships as commodities. Let's break this down a step further. A Cutlass Black costs 1,385,300 UEC, or 100 US dollars from RSI. For an extra $10, you can get the LTI version of the Cutlass Black on the gray market. Now, consider the time it takes to take, make the real world currency to purchase that ship. Then consider the in-game time to purchase the ship. Now subtract the game's value as entertainment from that original real-world money cost and evaluate the result. Of course, the Cutlass is one of the most popular ships and many are available with LTI, so it's not exactly the best example. Let's take a Hammerhead at 21.4 million UEC or originally $725 from RSI. Current prices for LTI on the gray market are around $775 and you can't currently buy one from RSI. You could see how the value of the hammerhead as a commodity has risen from the original price. Purchasing a reclaimer, for example, would potentially take years of in-game time to purchase with UEC, and it's a principal financial engine. Having one allows you to make much larger sums of money from salvaging compared to, say, a vulture. The commodity value of the vulture is much lower. Having LTI and the Reclaimer both protects the investment into the engine, but it also reduces the cost to operate it as well, since you don't have to further pay for insurance. LTI and the Reclaimer also reduces the cost of acquiring it over time, as the longer you own it, the cost per day of ownership actually drops, while with traditional insured ships you must continually renew the insurance at a cost. The final commodity element is that a Reclaimer with LTI can be sold to another player for real currency for more than one without. In fact, for some ships that are continually available for sale, lack of LTI renders them valueless at resale because someone could buy the same ship from CIG. So in the insurance model, you should only put LTI on a few small starting ships, rolling the cost of further insurance into the continued operating cost of the ship on larger purchases. In the commodity model, LTI on small inexpensive ships is irrelevant as the replacement cost is negligible and ensuring the continued maximum value of your real world investment is more important. In the insurance model, you would LTI the Vulture because with it you could eventually always replace your Reclaimer. 
In the commodity model, LTI on the vulture is a waste of real-world money, and protecting the value of the reclaimer is more important. So which model is more viable? Ultimately, it depends on the player and their financial beliefs, but let's discuss it down in the comments. Which model do you think is better and why? As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like here and on Facebook. Hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you all next time.